What is up guys, my name is Matt Workman for Cinematography Database and today we're going to be looking at how you bring in a light and how you turn that light on. So in the last episode, we made this little scene here and we brought in a camera, we brought in a person, which you may or may not have, um, depending on if you've watched the Fuse tutorials. And now we're gonna bring in a light just to, sh just to show this process really quickly for people that haven't done it before. Uh, there's a whole bunch of lights here. Let's bring in an Airy T1 is always kind of my first example. Uh, we're going to bring in our baby stand. There's a bunch of different stands. Um, yeah. So we hit build and it comes in. We should do some labeling over here. I'm going to call this a cam and I'm going to call this key light like that. And we're going to bring that down here. So let's grab our Airy T1. What you'll see is that this light is not on, right? It's just sitting there, so that's not helpful. I'm gonna first of all grab the main CD rig object and move it over here. And we wanna turn this light on, and to do that, you're gonna select the Airy T1 and you're gonna click light on. And immediately, I guess I kind of set this up funny, as you can see that it's lighting up the frame, but it's a little bit dim. Here, you're gonna change this to 2000. There you go, so it's a little bit brighter. These numbers are in lumens, and they don't really relate to the real world Exactly. We haven't tried to do that yet. It's actually, in my opinion, not super important. It actually kind of becomes cumbersome. But so you know, these are in lumens. So you kind of just look at it and what you see is what you get more or less. You can change the color of that light here. So we'll make it green or make, let's make it orange, right? So now it's orange and we'll set it back to white because yeah. So what we want to do here is grab this lighting stand, bring it up. We want to grab the T1 and we want to tilt it down. So it's a little bit hard to see what's going on here. So we're going to go into this objects thing over here and bring a floor in, which is called the plane. We are going to grab the little handles and make this floor bigger like that. So now you have a floor. Pretty easy. Now over here, because this scene's a little bit dark, um, because there's only one light on, you can go to display and turn on quick shading. So now we can see kind of everything here. Um, but over here, we can see that the scene is actually being lit and like what it's going to look like. So if you want to render, let's go over those settings really quickly. <laughs> this composition is absolutely horrendous. Let me just change that really quickly. Um, let's turn, go to the RO. What the? Oh, that's the RO. I see different minds. Um, I'm actually going to delete the RO for now and the slider. Just make this simpler. Where'd my Model 10 go? Oh, is that the height? Oh, I see. I'm just tilted up. Sorry. Sorry for messing around here, guys. It's a little bit loose today, this tutorial. I'm just trying to get these get these out there. Kind of update this just a little bit so that you're looking at R2 stuff if this is your first time ever using it. So there, we've framed up and we want to render this scene, right? So we're going to do view, use as render view. That means we're going to render out of this one. And we're going to hit Shift R. There we go. For some reason that wasn't working. I don't know why. Uh, but it works now. So we hit Shift R and it's going to the frame buffer or the picture viewer. And I'm just going to let this render out in real time here. So this isn't too bad, actually. This is going pretty quickly. This looks like it's going to be done in about 30 seconds. And we're going to talk about rendering really quickly just so that you guys can get up on your feet, get up and running um, without having to watch all the older videos just yet. So we're going to let this finish rendering, grab something to drink. And there we are. So 30 seconds for a 1080 frame. That is fast for CG. I'm running just a little laptop that was kind of cranking away. So that looks pretty good, right? So that's something you could even bring to the director at this point. It's like, hey, that's what it looks like if you put OT1 at that kind of lighting angle, right? And so we can do the same thing from over here, but I'm not going to. Uh, let's look at our render settings. So you're going to click this little icon up here. And let's talk about some of these render settings. So render settings is essentially what decides the quality of the render that we just made, how the lighting is going to look. And what we just use there is called the standard renderer. And standard is pretty bad. <laughs> it's it's going to be really fast, though. That's that's what's nice about it. So if you're trying to just do quick previews, just use standard. Use standard. It's not going to do any bounce lighting. It's not going to do any sophisticated lighting. But it's going to get some quick lighting communicated. And it's going to render very quickly. I think that's going to be really nice if, say, you're just trying to communicate composition and camera blocking. That's going to be really helpful for you. So that's the standard renderer. I'm going to close this real quick and I guess I will render this out. So say we did a render view like this. Uh, we'll go to use render view and hopefully shift R works this time. Yeah. Okay. Now it does. And yeah, so this just cranks away. This is fast um, compared to what we're going to be doing in a second. So we see this cranking away and the scene is so dark. So we don't really see the camera or the light. We just see the person. So not all that helpful. But anyway, that's the standard renderer. So what we want to do now, though, is add a little bit of realism to this and add a little bit of quality. So I believe if you have, um, what is it? If you have Cinema 4D broadcast and higher, so broadcast, visualize, and studio all have this thing called physical. 
So we have a physical renderer now, and that's what that's going to do is that's going to attempt to do more realistic lighting. And if you want to have depth of field, you would turn that on here. But I'm going to keep that off for right now. The main settings, you don't ever have to really worry about any of this stuff. Not yet, not for a while. When you were just getting started in the system, the only things that matter are these four things here. And these default settings, you almost don't need to change them when you're just beginning. So let's just leave those completely alone. Just know that these are the settings you change to up the quality. But we're not going to deal with that. So let's take a peek at a physical render, see if we can even tell the difference. Shift R. Is it going to be faster than... It looks like it's faster. Well, let's see. We'll find out. So this is the same the same shot through the camera, except this time, instead of using the standard renderer, we are using the physical renderer. And it actually looks pretty similar. Looks pretty similar, and it's about the same speed. Actually, no, so let's see. So this is the, the standard renderer, and that took 29 seconds. Physical renderer actually looks a little bit better. Looks a little bit better, the detail, and it took um, 10 seconds less. So physical renderer is much faster. So again, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to save this. Um, if you're going to do simple renderers, right? Simple renders, and you want them to be fast and loose and quick, use the physical render if you have it very quick. Don't turn on global illumination. So those are the first two render settings that you want to look at. Use standard if you have whatever the entry level one is. I forget what it's called. And use physical if you want to do fast renders that look pretty decent. Now, what if we want to do lighting that's more realistic? Because if we go back to this scene and we look at it, What's happening is that when you're using physical render only, the light comes at, let's, let's go to this one, big, big size. I middle clicked to, by the, to make this screen bigger. Um, what's happening is the light's coming out of this light here, hitting this person, and that's it, right? And it's going down, it's hitting the floor, and that's it. It dies right there. So this is a fast calculation. It's, you can get some things communicated, but it's not very realistic. What we want to do is turn on global illumination. And what that's essentially going to do is that's going to take the light from here. It's going to hit the floor and then it's going to bounce back up and light him from below as well. And this is how light works in the real world. So let's turn that on. You're going to go to Effect. You're going to go to Global Illumination, and it's on. And these settings are all fine, and we'll be talking about them a little bit as we go along here. Uh, so let's change. The main quality for Global Illumination is right here, right? And despite it going to High, you can actually go to Custom. Uh, and I think if you go like this, you can bring this all the way up to 200, which doesn't make any sense to me why 200 is the highest. But let's keep it at um, medium for now. For the irradiance cache, we're going to change this to low. So just change the things to like somewhat low settings here. So let's close that. And let's go back to this view. Let's see if we can really... I'm going to make the floor white. So don't worry about materials yet. Let's make this render now that we have global illumination on. And what we should see is that the floor is going to bounce up a little bit of light back at him. And that should be good. And this is also going to take quite a bit longer, I think. I don't know how much longer. And 1080 is kind of a high resolution if your computer isn't that fast to be rendering it at. But I'm going to see how my computer does with it. Okay, not that bad. But just know that standard render or the physical renderer without GI would have already been done rendering. This one seems like it's going to take a little bit closer to a minute to render. So let's look at this here. So already, I can see that the direct light is very similar. But if you look at the light under his chin, we can tell that there's a little bit of bounce light coming from the floor, and that's kind of subtle. But as you add more things into the scene, like walls and sort of that sort of thing, global illumination, global illumination makes a big difference. Right? So here's it without global illumination. Here's it with. So we're seeing the light is starting to bounce around. This scene, again, is very dark. It's not the best example for it, but it does render quickly. So that made the render time from 18 seconds to 40 seconds. So it pretty much doubled it to turn GI on. And if your scene's more complicated, it's going to do more than double it. So the next thing we're going to do here, if you want to up the quality even more, is let's make a simple scene here. And I'm not going to use Set Designer right now. I'm just going to use these cubes to kind of show this off for people that have never used Cinema 4D. I brought in a cube. I'm flying through this stuff. This is stuff that, honestly, you can find on the internet on your own. I don't know how much time I'm going to put into this. You can go watch some of my old tutorials if you want, where I kind of break this down. But just know that they're not with R2. They're R1, so it will look a tiny bit different. But I just made a really quick room, so that's how easy that is. Uh, I'm dragging this little texture I made onto it. I know I'm going quickly. I'm not going over everything. But let's look at this scene now real quickly. What's going to happen is this light's going to hit the floor. It's going to hit the wall. And it's going to bounce just all over the place. And this is going to take a significant amount of time to, to render, right? So let's do this again. Uh, Shift R. 1080. I might have to switch this, switch this to 720. We'll see how long this is going to take. Um, 
what's going on now is it's calculating the irradiance pass, which is essentially called the first bounce. So if you just have physical on, the light coming from the light, it hits something and it dies. And that's physical renderer. Then if you turn on global illumination, it's going to hit the floor and then bounce once and hit something else. That's global illumination. Now in the real world, light doesn't just hit, doesn't just bounce once and hit something and then die. It actually bounces many, many, many times. And that's what we're going to be simulating right after this. And we'll see if there's a big difference in this scene. But essentially, once we turn on our next level of quality, that is the highest level of quality that Cinema 4D is going to allow you to do as far as simulating lighting. So these are all the settings. It's probably a little bit complicated if you are brand new to Cinema 4D. But this is the crux and a very important part of Cine Designer that I want people to understand from the very get-go. Like, why doesn't the lighting? Why doesn't the lighting look good? I came here to make good lighting. Uh, this is why I'm trying to set you off on the right foot on this second video for R2. So we're letting this render out, and you'll see that this is already at a minute, and this takes a little bit longer because it's calculating these bounces off the walls. There's a lot more happening in the scene. And what's really nice is you can see under his chin, there's a little reflection. And if you look at his neck and his face, because his face is a little bit reflective, the light is reflected from the wall onto his cheek here. And that's very realistic. Um, so we're getting realistic reflections because of the GI and because of the material of this person's skin, which we're not going to cover. So this is going to, I'm going to let this finish up. This just took, it's going to take about, 1 minute 45 seconds. So we went from this scene taking 20 seconds with no GI and no background, no environment, to taking 40 seconds with a white floor and one with global um, illumination on. And this is global illumination on. It took a minute and 45 seconds with the room. So you see as you add things, the times increase. Again, 1080 is a very high resolution to be working at. If you are learning, you want to go faster, I would say work at like 960 by 540 or something like that. So the last thing I'm going to do for this video is I'm going to go to global, global illumination. And you'll see that the primary bounce, which we've been looking at before, is a radiance cache. Just use that. Don't use the other ones yet until we go over them or you do your own research. For secondary, we're going to do this thing called light mapping. Okay, you don't have to know why. The, these are the settings I recommend for you. I would change this to high. Irradiance stays low. Light mapping stays 5,000. You turn on pre-filter. That's it. Don't worry about it. I actually think you can even go to render settings here and do new. But I'm not going to do that. You can save this, but I think you should just kind of memorize this setup. Again, turn on global illumination, irradiance cache, light mapping, samples high, irradiance cache low. I know this is a lot of numbers. 5,000 is fine. You can up it later if you want pre-filter on. Okay, so let's see what the big difference is here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control and make a ceiling. So now as we go in here, this is the final light simulation that's going to make lighting look pretty realistic. This is what I use for most of my stuff. If you watched my main YouTube channel or my Instagram, these are the settings I'm generally using. And then I crank them up to be even prettier later, but we won't even cover that here. So now this light, if I turn on Garo shading, this light's going to come out it's going to hit this wall and then it's going to bounce and hit the ceiling. It's going to, that's going to hit the floor. It's going to bounce and the light's just going to go everywhere, right? But what happens with the conservation of energy is as the light hits something, it loses energy. So it gets dimmer and then it gets dimmer and it gets dimmer. And this is going to handle all of that interaction realistically for you. And if you set up your materials correctly, that light, that T1, our virtual T1 is going to emit, emit light and the camera's going to catch it and render it just like the real world. That's why it's called the physical renderer. That is the power of Cinema 4D. It's built into Cinema 4D. There's other ways of getting realistic lighting, but they all cost money. Cinema 4D, this is built in. I probably should have done this while we were rendering because this is going to probably take a minute. This is going to wrap out our look at rendering uh, today. So we looked at, in the last episode, installing Cine Designer and then um, looking through the camera and kind of playing with that. Not in depth, just really quickly. I think that people are going to want to just get in there and play with it. Uh, hopefully it is intuitive enough that you can do that. And for the lights, that's what we did this episode. You bring in a light, same way you bring in a camera. You have to go turn on the light. And one note I'm going to say while this is rendering out, oh, this is going pretty quickly, is that if you use a modifier like a Chimera, you have to turn on the Chimera, but then turn off the light that it's connected to. So that's kind of weird, but if you start to understand Cinema 4D a little bit better, that's it does make sense. And the other thing I want to note is that if you are trying to use Kino Flows, or space lights, you have to turn on global illumination and you will not see the effect of those lights in the viewports. Um, those only happen at rendering. And that's just 
kind of the way that that this kind of uh, renderer works is you don't get a viewport of GI only lights. So this is actually not going to take too long. So even though we turned on what are called secondary bounces, so we're using light mapping now, this is um, this is looking like it's going to be about a two minute render, which is not too bad. So let's see, is there a big difference here? Ah, so there's a little bit wrong with the shader on this camera, but uh, on this person, but uh, are we sensing a big difference? It's kind of subtle, I think, in this wide shot that uh, the secondary bounces on. But just so that you know, if you want to get in here and start playing with lighting and have it be accurate, those are the render settings. The single, those are the render settings you need to use, and that's a general overview of how to do the lights. So I'm gonna let this finish up, and that's gonna wrap out this episode for Cine Designer R2 training. Let's let it finish and let's see what the time clock's in at. So 150. So turning on light mapping in this case only added about 10 seconds to the render. That's not too bad. Let's render this one out now that we see this. And so let's go back to quick because I can't see the mat. We have a ceiling, right? So let's render this out. This will be my last, this will be the actual one. Let's render out the behind the scenes view. So when you're doing cine design, which I'm going to have to do either on this YouTube channel or I might just make a dedicated like course that's like like $100 or something like that where I take you through the process of like taking a commercial for instance taking a script and storyboards and going through the whole process of doing cine design like for a living like how you would do it to make money or at least how I did it when I was shooting commercials and using cine designer you know what kind of renders do you send your client what renders do you send your crew what are you going to send the director? How do you handle notes? How do you make this fast? What, what are you going to send them? That actual workflow of being a cine designer and a cinematographer, that's something that's a little bit more in depth than I think the YouTube videos are going to allow. So I'm probably going to make a course on that. But the whole point to say is that cine design is a balance of sending renders like this, which are kind of behind the scenes technical renders, and then sending the through the, through the lens renders, which are kind of like your virtual storyboards. So yeah, so this is a good example here. So I'll kind of break this down as this finishes up. That only took a minute to render. So if you use these render settings correctly, this is not too bad. This shouldn't be taking you hours to render these frames. So, and you, you want to keep them short. So the light comes out of here, it hits him. It's creating this nice shadow that's very physically accurate with the sharp shadows here and softer there. This is all very accurate to the real world. Uh, nice fall off, which is uh, more or less accurate to how soft the fall off is from a Fresnel like that. But what you'll see is that because before we rendered it, I think it was a complete darkness. Yeah, see how, see how dark this scene is, the behind the scenes? That's because there's no light bouncing. It just hits the floor and it dies. In this scene, it hits the floor and it bounces around. So you see all this soft illumination? This is all secondary lighting, and that is global, global illumination, and that's how it would be working in the real world. Boom. So that is going to wrap up our look at lighting. I hope that's enough for you guys to install the plugin, get a camera in there, and then bring in some lights and set up the settings so that you're using the right settings and things look a little bit normal. Now you're gonna encounter different types of artifacting and noise and that just goes with rendering in general. We're gonna have to be getting into that a little bit in more in depth, but I really, encourage you, I really encourage you if you've watched these videos to go back and watch some of the older ones uh, and I'm gonna do my best to try to kind of re-update them as I go. I'm gonna be doing a video on Fuse. I'm gonna do a video on how to bring in realistic floor textures and then um, but go check out the other videos on this YouTube channel or if you're on the website, they're also on the website. So thank you so much. I'll see you guys on the next one. Cheers. Bye.